Welcome to my latest micro nugget on SRX security policy. Exactly who do we trust anyway? If you watch the X Files, trust no one. So remember from our nugget about the overview as far as the basic flow that a packet will go through uh, both the first time and subsequent times through an interface uh, or through the security gateway, I should say. And remember that the policy is just one part right here, but it can actually call and note other things that are going to be going on. Uh, whether through the initial time in building the flow or through the subsequent times as far as what happens to the packet along the way. So good to know that the policy is going to be the really kind of a central part of our control here in setting up the flow information. So diving into a few things, the policy itself is just going to be a set of rules. So hang on, let's clear this off for a moment. So my set of rules that we're going to have along the way really tells the device what to do with both interzone and intrazone, but it's important to know that it's dealing with transit traffic. Okay, so what else does that lead? Well, stuff to the device. So things that are destined to my device are not handled by my security policies. Okay, that's actually done all from my zone setup, and that would be, what was that called again? That's right, the host inbound traffic. Okay, those rules that we set up, whether it be the protocols or the system services in there, that's all handled in that fashion. So this stuff kind of put off to the side, really not going to be thinking about it in there. Transit traffic, on the other hand, is exactly what we're going to do in policies. So always, 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 traffic will be examined. So guess you can kind of get the idea that the always might be important to know. But the security policies will take care about that. Right. Now, there is a system default policy. And guess what? It doesn't like anything. Okay, so it's going to deny all traffic. If we get down to this, so when we start looking at the order of our policies and everything is going to be very important, then this is what's going to happen. You're not going to get any traffic in there. Right. Now, when we start looking at branch devices, so again, kind of going back to my overview, my branch devices were anything, um, we'll say less than or equal to the SRX 650. Okay, so 650 and below is going to be a branch device. 1400 and higher will be the data center or you know larger enterprise or service provider devices. In here, we do have factory default policies. So we have a couple things that are set up for us. That is going to be a trust, you know, remember the trust zone, okay? So a trust to trust. So that would be my intra zone traffic, as well as my trust to untrust. So stuff going out to the internet, if you will. And everything in here will be permit all. Right, so everything is going to be good as far as that's concerned. There's also an untrust to trust, and that is going to be a deny all as well. So by default, it's going to kill everything going in. Now, here's kind of the question to ask, right, something to think about along the way. So if I have trust to untrust and say that the traffic is actually good for doing that, so if I have a user on my inside, and on one of my inside interfaces, and it's trying to go out to the internet, okay, so web service, whatever it's going to be, I know that by this, I allow that traffic to go out to the internet. But by this policy, isn't that going to kill everything coming back? All right, it's always good to think about that, but the answer is no, because you have to remember that a flow, which is what we set up when we go through that, that big flow chart that we had before, we're setting up a flow or a session, a flow is bidirectional. So we're looking at both the traffic going out as well as the return traffic coming back in and saying that yes, it's going to be allowed. So as long as I see outbound traffic go out, I will allow the return traffic to come in that way. 
anything that's going to be coming in, I guess, unsolicited, if you will, something that doesn't match an existing flow, that's where it's going to get killed by this policy over here. So it is good to understand all that for where we're looking at it. But again, going back to that flow base diagram, we match the zone first. So see what our zone is going to be. We know the incoming one by the incoming interface. We match the outgoing zone or the two zone based on my lookup after destination NAT if necessary, uh, but based on my lookup of where it's going to. Once I have my zone, then I can look at my policy to see whether it's going to be allowed or not. And that will create the flow and determine whether things are going to be good, okay? or decide that things will be killed and that'll be all that too. Okay? So that's going to be the basis for what we're going through in terms of my lookups right here. Now, security policy itself, okay? so all of these things that we have, we can have lots and lots of policies. So lots and lots of things going on and lots and lots of names to kind of keep track of in there. That's why it's important to know that everything is done by a zone, or I guess we should call it a zone pair. Okay. You may also see this in other vendors when you look at their zone-based firewall configuration. You'll actually have a, a configuration for what they call a zone pair. So here we call it a from zone and a to zone, but same basic idea. You're pairing those together to decide what the from and what the to happens to be uh, in terms of looking at what your policy is. I hope this micro nugget has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.